Hey there, folks. Um, I was in the middle of fixing something for my wife here, and it dawned on me that perhaps some of you could benefit from this knowledge. Uh, it took me a lot of time to figure out how to do these things growing up, so perhaps if you see how to do it very quickly, uh, then maybe I can do you a favor for the future. So, what we have here is a tire that keeps on losing pressure. Okay, it's going flat on us. It's not actually going flat, it's getting low every few days. It's gotta be aired up. And uh, to get one of these fixed, it's probably $20, something along those lines. But you can spend a small amount of money, probably, geez, I don't know, $10 at AutoZone, and buy a kit that'll fix several tires okay several tires so that twenty dollars you're spending is uh, mostly just in labor uh, if you go and get one plugged elsewhere now how do you find the hole well for me it's very easy i've got a jack so i've got my tire all jacked up here so i can give it a spin if i so choose uh and in so doing i am able to get down here with my nice light and look at the tire and see if I see anything that's not supposed to be there. Uh, you could also do this if you have somebody you trust uh, by looking behind the tire in the daylight and just watching as the car drives forward and looking for things that aren't supposed to be in place. Uh, or alternatively, you can bathe the tire in a solution like what I have here and look for bubbles uh, if you can't find where the hole is. Now for me, oh, let's get down here. I was able to find the problem pretty fast. That's pretty obviously a nail right there. All right, pretty obviously a nail. Uh, and what we have here is a solution with lots of dishwashing detergent and a little bit of water. So what that does is when you wet the area, you can see bubbles. All right, and again, you can do this to any part of the tire you think might have an issue. And if it bubbles, you know, you know where your problem is. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab some pliers so that I can get in there and yank that nail out. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how we're going to fix the resulting hole. Okay, to pull that nail out, I have a nice set of uh, Krauter, K-R-A-E-U-T-E-R, uh, American-made needle nose. There's no telling how old these are. Uh, I buy all my tools, or at least I used to, um, by buying old tool chests and things. That's how I got a lot of my tools. And these nice American-made needle nose uh, came kind of beat up, and I cleaned them up and made them beautiful. Uh, so I paid virtually no money for these, and they will definitely outlive me. Uh, they're probably older than me at this moment. So excellent tool, and they're going to allow me to wedge down in there, get that nail, and just leverage it right on out. So you may not be able to see this, but I assure you it's not that hard. I just put my needle nose on either side of the nail. I'm gonna push down real hard, grab that nail, oh, and I'll just work it on out of there. Oh, look at there. It was a screw. Wow, look at that. Pretty intense. Yeah, alive. So now we got our hole, and frankly, we're gonna let some air bleed out of this because I find that plugging them with air flowing out is far more trouble than it's probably worth. Okay, what you see here is a nice uh, AutoZone tire repair kit, and this one's kind of old and melty. We're going to do our best with what we've got. So we have the literal plugs themselves, which are here. And they're in essence these tar-covered, super sticky, gross, fibrous things that get everywhere. So I'm going to put on some gloves in a second. And then we have some tools here. All right, here is the tool that you use to put the plug in. And then here is the tool used to make sure that the hole is appropriate uh, for installing the plug. So this, you have to get into the hole here, and it's got a little bit of a bite to it, and it'll clean the opening up, because if the hole is not the appropriate size, uh, if the opening there has some uh, like decreasing in size as it goes inwards, uh, that is not ideal for getting the plug to seal correctly. 
And then what you'll see that I do here is I will take the plug before I install it and I'll put just a little bit of rubber cement on it. Uh, and this does two things. And again, all of these things that I picked up over the years that I've been doing this sort of work, uh, an, an old man told me that you could put the rubber cement on there and it'll help the plug to get in so it somewhat lubricates on the way in. Uh, and then the rubber cement will seal up any small gaps that are present. Uh, and then as you drive, the plug just becomes a part of the tire. So with that in mind, let's give this a try. The reason I've changed positions is because with the jack where it was, I was having kind of trouble working because I was afraid I was going to end up jamming my hand into something and getting injured. And that would not be ideal. So, no thanks. <laughs> I will just stick with what I've got here. All right, so here's the hole. Put a little bit of rubber cement on there. That'll just help this kind of work itself through. Again, the rubber cement somewhat acts like a lubricant just to make it a little easier to get that hole nice and uniform. Now, let's check the status of our plugs. Oh. All right, there is a plug right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our plug through, <laughs> I don't know if the gloves are gonna make it. We'll put our plug through the little opening in here and it's somewhat of a task made easier with appropriate tools. Okay, now you can see what we've got. I have the plug all the way through the tool here. I'm gonna pull that down like so, and we're gonna coat this thing royally in rubber cement. And again, the rubber cement just sort of lubricates the plug and then we'll seal up gaps when necessary. All right. Now for the fun part. So this tool comes out. And then getting this in is complicated. Let's see if we can do it. This requires a pretty large amount of pressure. There it goes. See it? So we are in most of the way. And then what you do is you get this thing turning, turn, 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 something like this, it gets a nice build up on the surface. And then the goal is to take this tool and yank this thing out of there without the plug coming out. So it should tear loose inside the tire with any luck. So it feels good and loose. Again, by twisting it like this, I've gotten the rubber cement all over the tool so it's not as sticky as it was before. And then with one good yank out of there, with any luck, the plug stays, the tool comes out. Ready, set, go. <sighs> and there it is, folks. That is one freshly plugged leaky tire. <laughs> and that's how you do it. So what'll happen over time? is it will bunch up on the inside and really get this nicely sealed off. And I'm gonna get some clippers and just clip off a little bit of the excess here on the outside and it'll eventually compact into there and become a nice solid mass. So that, that's how you change a tire. And again, you can buy one of these little kits for nothing at AutoZone and just keep it in the back of your vehicle. And if you ever had to, you could do this on the side of the road without a whole lot of effort. I mean, it's a little easier the way we've got it set up here, but it would by no strategy, stretch of the imagination be the end of the world to do this on the side of the road. I, I could do it in 20 minutes, no problem. 
So that is how you plug a tire, and I hope that helps you out in the future. All right, I'm just going to throw this out there. Keeping a little toolbox, having your tire repair kit, having your air pump. If you care about your loved ones that are going to be driving around without you, keeping all that stuff in there just in case is meaningful. All right, meaningful. And I really should have fire extinguishers in there as well. It's always smart to have a fire extinguisher in a car. As a person that's seen a car burn, keeping a little fire extinguisher is not the worst idea. So spend 50 bucks, maybe 100, and get a nice little toolbox, a fire extinguisher, an air pump, and a tire repair kit. And put it in the trunk of your car, it might save your life one day. So just throwing that out there for you, not a terrible idea.